Howdy gang, Michelle here, and today I am bringing you this awesomely fun, whimsical short row stitch. It's super easy. Um, if you've ever done either my dragon tail scarf, the zigzag scarf, the 10 stitch blanket, you are already a pro at short rows. So what I did is I just came up with this simple, fun scarf. Um, now I did look out there. I saw similar needle knitted ones, many of them. It's a simple stitch, so I'm not stealing anybody's pattern per se. Um, but there was nothing that I found out there that was loom knitted like this. So I thought I would work this up and show everybody how to do the basics for it. It's super easy, really fun looking. I do recommend using a self-striping yarn with this. If you want, you can totally do color change, but I did try it with a, um, a solid, and it just really doesn't pop like it does with the self-striping yarn. I mean, it does the work for you. But again, um, no looming police. This is totally up to you, however you want to do it. For this particular one, I actually used Karen um, Simply Soft Yarn in stripes, and the color is called Times Square. It's a really fun, delicate color. It's super soft. If you've ever worked with Karen Simply Soft before, you will know super, super soft. Um, and I, I really love how it came together. It looks really fun and um, it's very eye-catching. So for this particular one, I use this 24, um, excuse me, this uh, 52 peg oval loom and a number four worsted weight yarn. And as you can see with a simple garter, which is a unit and pearl, it came out really nice clean looking stitches, clean edges. I don't do the turn and wrap as many of you know who have ever worked with my videos before. I like a nice clean edge. So I always do a knit and purl on the edges and it gives it that nice tight clean look rather than a turn and wrap where it's loose, it's messy. I just don't like it. So I'm gonna give you the basics. Now you can do this with any loom any yarn, just remember, if you use a thinner yarn like I did here with this number four worsted weight, you wanna go with a smaller gauge, whether a half inch, a three eighths, something along that line. Now, if you wanted to use a thicker yarn, you're gonna go with a larger gauge, like a five eighths or a three quarter. You wanna make sure that your ratios with that are good. So that way you do get this nice, tight, clean um, garter stitch, okay? So again, for this one, a four worsted weight yarn and I used a half inch which I'm going to use here and for this I'm going to use some leftover red heart stripes and I think this is called neon retro this was one that my son had picked out for a 10 stitch blanket I did for him a couple of years ago so I have some extra of that and um, again I'm using the same loom which is a half inch this is the small oval loom, it's 52 pegs. But again, you can use a 3 8 if you want. There's no looming police here. Just make sure that the weight of your yarn will work well with the gauge that you're using, okay? Keep that in mind. So I'm gonna give you the basics. Now for this one here that I already worked up, I cast it on 24 pegs and I got this length here, which is, let me grab my little froggy face over here. Oops, it's down. So that's approximately six inches across. Um, and I actually did this as a twisted cowl, which you saw from the photo. Um, but again, if you wanna make this bigger or thinner, it's totally up to you. I'm giving you the basics, okay? So for me, just to show you guys for um, educational purposes, I've only cast it on 10, just so I can show you guys the basics and how quickly this works up and what to do. If you wanna go bigger, if you wanna make a shawl, um, go as wide as you want. It's totally up to you, okay? So once you cast on, and again, the cast on is completely up to you, whether you wanna use a E-wrap cast on. For me, I love the no hook crochet cast on. It's super quick, it's nice and clean looking. That's what I used for the sample one as well. It's totally up to you, but for this one, I just cast it on 10. Now, what I want you to do is pause the video, cast on however many you want, whether you're gonna do it just to test or whether you're gonna actually make something, pause the video, get everything casted on, and then come back. 
All right, so now you should be casted on and we're going to jump right into it. Now, again, for me, first and last pegs, I always do a knit and a purl because it gives it that nice clean edge that I had shown you guys pretty much on any video that you've done of mine. And that way it's not messy. So work with me here because I'm working with a camera between my hands and it's kind of off of how I normally do it. I say that in all my videos, but it is. So this last one, I'm going to get started by purling. Now for me, purling is much easier going uh, clockwise and knitting counterclockwise. So I'm going to purl. What I'm going to do is purl all the way to the second peg. Okay. This is my first, this is my second. So I'm going to purl all the way up to this last one and then we'll get started. So again, sorry that it looks so kind of wonky. And again, whether you purl in this direction like I do or knit in this direction, and with knit, again, we're going to use either a simple U-knit or true knit, which is basically the same thing, um, just two different techniques on doing it. I prefer to use the U-knit because it works up super fast for me like that. All right, so one more and I'll be at my second. There we go. So I've purled to my second peg. Here for this first one here what you're gonna do is bring your working yarn behind the first peg turn and wrap it and then knit bring the working yarn in front of the second one and you knit that one so now this is going to leave two strands on your first one you've already knitted this one so you're going to knit all the way back to your very last peg over here okay so again for me I prefer using the U-knit, just bring it across and it works up super quick for me like that. And again, these are just the basics. So here I am at the last peg, I knit it, I bring my yarn around, working yarn in front and purl the same one. So I knitted it and then I'm coming around, I'm starting my next row with a purl. So now I'm going to purl all the way up to my third one here. There we go. And again, I, I like using self-striping yarn for this because it really, um, A, it does the work for you like I mentioned earlier, and B, it really pops with this particular um, stitch because it it changes direction for you while you're doing it. All right, so we're almost to that second peg. And again, sorry, this is kind of wonky looking. It's just I'm looking underneath the camera and doing this. <laughs> All right, so now I'm at my second peg. And the same thing. You bring your working yarn behind it, wrap it around it, so now you have two strands on two, and then you're going to U-knit this third one. All right, so now you guys kind of got the gist. So what we're going to do is pause the video and continue that until you get to this last one, which is um, you're not going to double wrap that one. Okay, so we're going to double wrap this one, and then once you double wrap that one, meet me back here. All right, so for me, I didn't do this one yet because I wanted you guys to see. I am going to knit this one and then I'm gonna turn around and purl it for my last one. Then I'm just gonna wrap this one, come around to my last one, you knit that, and then purl it, okay? And now you're done that first wedge. And this is what it's going to look like. It's going to look like a nice decreased wedge, like a triangle. Okay. So one end is, is thin and then it works up to a thicker. So you're done part one. Now, as you can see, oops, let me grab my hook. It's trying to run away on every one of these pegs, except for the, the, the very last one. So there's one, two. There's two strands 
on every peg except for this last one and what we're going to do is we're going to purl both strands all the way to the end so you're not not going to work like you do with a 10 stitch where you do one and go back and do the next and go back no this you're going to work straight across all right so i've already purled my first one here so i have that nice clean edge you're going to grab both loops and purl them both off and you're going to do that until you get all the way to the end and again i'm only doing a small um area here with only 10 pegs but you can do this any size that you want. If you want to do it bigger for a nice shawl um, or um, like a capelet or something like that, it's totally up to you. I'm just giving you the basics here so you can see how to do it and come up with your own creations. Almost to the end. And... The last two all right so now I've purled that I'm going to turn and you knit that same one to give me that nice clean edge and as you can see now all ten have only one so in the first wedge here as you can see we started where we double wrapped and then went this way so now we're going to knit all the way back and we're going to start double wrapping this way so knit all the way back until you get to this one and this is the fun part see how the color is going to start changing right when we need it so now this second wedge is going to be that nice bright neon yellow so turn and wrap that last peg that'll give you two on there you can see the the black and the neon yellow and then purl because remember we're purling in one direction knitting in the other it's totally up to you all the way back and it's the same exact thing for this second section so we just purl all the way back to the first peg and I want to apologize about my hands. Um, I was involved in a car accident a couple of months ago. And the muscle relaxers, um, even though they worked well, apparently my body had a reaction to them. And it caused this discoloration on my hands. We're hoping it will go away. Fingers crossed. So I apologize that they look kind of a yucky. I'm rather embarrassed by them. I was going to wear gloves, but... All right, so the last peg we're going to purl. And then we just come right around and we U wrap. All right, so now you're going to do the same thing. As you can see, I have two strands on this first one. And we're going to U knit all the way to the second. And then once we get to the second peg, we're just simply going to bring the working yarn behind, around, and then you're going to bring it down and purl that. So now, this first peg, let me separate those, you have two strands, and the second peg, you have two strands, okay? So you're gonna repeat the same exact process that you did to create this wedge, but now we're gonna have this end be fat and this end be short. So go ahead, pause the video, and then come back once you have two strands on all but the very first one. All right, so as you can see, I have two strands on all these, and then this one, turn and wrap, there we go, bring it down, purl it. And then you're gonna you knit the same way. Okay, so two strands on all of these except for the first one. So all we're gonna do now is knit back and then repeat, as you can see here, there's one wedge and I, I love, I didn't even plan it this way. <laughs> I love how this first section is in black and this second section is in the neon yellow and it, it the yarn gods have been on my side. <laughs> 
and it makes it easier for everybody to see as you can see wedge one wedge two and you're going to repeat those processes so you will knit all these off and then you're going to do the same thing that we did for this one where you're going to double wrap these and then for the next wedge you're going to double wrap from these just like we have here and you just continue that process until it is as long as you like and you end up with something fun and funky and whimsical looking like this okay and remember keep in mind you can use a thicker yarn but use a larger gauge you can use a thinner yarn use a smaller gauge so um, this is basically a video just to show you the basics on how to create that and do those wedges and like I said I, I couldn't have planned this better if I had tried but section one and then section two all right and of course if you guys ever have any questions or you um, aren't sure about something you can always reach me either through my Facebook group which is love to loom you are welcome to join us or you can drop me an email at I love to loom knit at gmail.com or you can message me through Facebook as well so Thanks for joining me again today, gang. I love you all. Happy looming.